chimps start wars for power. Although instances of chimpanzees ganging up to harm and take the life of their alpha are rare, male chimps as a whole can become very violent, and the struggle for power appears never-ending. Additionally, it has been widely noted that chimpanzees share many similar behaviours to humans, from using tools to forming strong community and familial bonds. However, it seems that one more major characteristic that we share with our primate relatives is the occasional outbreak of conflict in the name of increasing personal power. This interesting development was observed and carefully recorded by Dr. Jane Goodall in the Kasakila Group, a clan of chimpanzees in Gombe National Park in Tanzania. The clan had once been a cohesive, unified chimpanzee community, but increasing tension in the dynamics slowly dissolved these relationships into what became the only known example of a chimpanzee conflict. After analysing the meticulous data collection on the social networks of the clan, researchers discovered that, in the years prior to the development of the violent rift, the once cohesive community had started showing signs of the formation of defined subgroups. What started as cliques developing out of an abnormal male-to-female ratio amongst the group quickly escalated into factions. These factions generally followed the social networks that had been in place earlier, as chimps who had previously tended to favour each other stuck together. Each faction controlled certain territory and engaged in fatal clashes with other groups for land grabs and increased power as the growing friction developed into a full-fledged chimpanzee conflict. The strife caused the community to split into two main groups what was left of the original Kasakela community and a group of separatists that became known as the Kahama community. However, the Kahama community only consisted of six adult males and three adult females to Kasakela's eight males and twelve females, and over the course of a violent four years, all of the males of the Kahama community lost their lives, and the Kasakela group expanded into their territory. Although the Kasakela were eventually driven back by a third rival chimpanzee group, the events are not unlike those of historical conflict in the name of increased land and domination. Even the particulars were shockingly and unflatteringly human-like. The first blood of the conflict occurred when six Kasakela males were sent to ambush another Kahama male, and blatantly celebrated with boisterous hoots and screams once they had slain the opposing male. This shocking start to the four-year Gombe civil conflict, which would become renowned for its insight into chimpanzee behaviour, was the first recorded time that any of the chimps in the group had been sent to deliberately take the life of a fellow male. Comparing chimpanzees to humans might seem like comparing apples to oranges. The research that Dr. Goodall conducted on the social relationships and behaviours that led to the split revealed patterns of communities splintering, that are not unlike what is seen in human groups. Perhaps these distantly related primates can teach us a great deal more about ourselves than people have realised. The Mystery of the Rongo Rongo The next mystery from Easter Island is that of the Rongo Rongo. Rongo Rongo is a form of writing that was discovered by Eugene Irod, who arrived at Easter Island as a missionary in 1864. During his time on the island, he came across a shocking discovery. Every hut was home to a piece of wood or a stick that had hieroglyphic characters written all over it. The drawings depict many different animals that are carved in with sharp stones. While these items are held onto, no one pays much attention to them in particular, which left Iraud wondering if there's significant meaning behind what's written. The name itself is interesting and could possibly mean more than originally thought. The name is from Rapa Nui language and means to recite, to declaim, to chant out. Since the wooden tablets were mostly found somewhat damaged with parts burned and weathered over the years, it's been challenging to determine what they truly mean. In order to gain a clear perspective on these ancient artefacts, it's important to know just what period of time they came from. Unfortunately, it's been near impossible to determine a specific date and the closest experts have landed on is the 13th century, which would have been when forest clearing happened on the island. How did they stumble upon that time period? One of the glyphs appeared to be an Easter Island palm, 
which had disappeared from the island in 1650. That means the scripts must be at least that old. Further examination pointed to an even later time period. Taking the timeline into account, it's easy to see how decoding the glyphs has been a demanding and strenuous task. When looking at the Rongo Rongo under the impression that it's writing, many other factors impact uncovering what was being communicated. There is still a limited number of illustrations, text to examine, and the lack of other sources with the same writing to provide context. With so little information surrounding the Rongo Rongo, it's challenging to come to any conclusions. One theory has proposed that it could be proto-writing, meaning that the symbols may provide meaning but might not necessarily be linguistic content. Under this theory, the Rongo Rongo may have simply been used as a decoration or to help with memory. Whilst we still have no answers when it comes to the Rongo Rongo, it's interesting to see how it could have been used to pass down stories or events to the next generations. With time, we may come across more information. Firm raises $15 million to bring woolly mammoth back from extinction. It is common knowledge that once an animal becomes extinct, it is gone forever from the face of the earth. However, although it might seem that the woolly mammoth, which went extinct 10,000 years ago, is one of the very last candidates to be able to return to earth, an American firm has set out to change that fact. There are those within the scientific community who have long believed that it was within the realm of scientific possibility that the woolly mammoth could be brought back to life. But the funding and drive to see the project through had rarely been seriously discussed. Now, however, the bioscience and genetics company Colossal has put an astonishing $15 million behind the project. The company's founders are software entrepreneur Ben Lam and Harvard Medical School geneticist George Church and the pair hope that their research funding will create a mammoth-elephant hybrid. Church said that their goal with the project is to make a cold-resistant elephant, but it is going to look and behave like a mammoth. Not because we are trying to trick anybody, but because we want something that is functionally equivalent to the mammoth that will enjoy its time at minus 40 degrees Celsius and do all the things that elephants and mammoths do, in particular, knocking down trees. The team hopes to begin by creating laboratory-grown embryos with mammoth DNA, which will be carried by a surrogate mother or in an artificial womb, estimating that they could have their first hybrid mammoth baby born within six years. To create the hybrid embryo, the researchers involved in the project will combine skin cells from the endangered Asian elephants and versatile stem cells containing mammoth DNA that is responsible for coding mammoth hair, fat layers, and other cold weather adaptations. These mammoth genomes have been recovered from preserved mammoth specimens found in the permafrost that are loosely related to the Asian elephants. Colossal has framed the project as an effort to help conserve the endangered Asian elephants and give them the characteristics required in order to be able to survive and continue to reproduce in their mammoth steppe of the Arctic, known for its vast stretches of frigid temperatures and seemingly uninhabitable land. They also hope that reintroducing the animals can help restore habitat degradation and combat the climate crisis, but there are those who are vehemently against the idea and believe that the idea of totally reinventing the tundra using mammoth-elephant hybrids is beyond the realm of possibility. Some people are hesitant about the potential ramifications behind introducing a several-ton species into an already fragile environment while there are also those who believe that the possibilities to alter this experiment for other endangered species could combat the mass extinctions being seen all over the globe. However, even in the case that all goes well, the introduction of the first ever woolly mammoth elephant hybrid isn't due for several more years, so there is still time to wait and ponder the effects. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.